Hi, this is Blake Bettner, Managing Editor of Worn and Wound. Today we're looking at a new release from Seiko that revives an old classic. Well, not revives exactly, there's a few surprises in there for the good measure, but it's brought back in modern guys all the same. This is the Seiko Prospects Speed Timer Solar Chronograph. This had us all pretty excited when it was released earlier this year uh, as a modern take on the classic kinetic Sportura all titanium, aka the Chin, aka Jay Leno. This was a very unique watch then, it is now. It incorporated a 1 100th of a second chronograph into a rather unusual design, and Seiko pays homage to this in these new SFJ references. There are still four subdials, but here they are set under a single crystal, unlike the Kinetic Sportura, which placed all the subdials within this titanium face. Here we get a more traditional structure, but the functionality remains, and it is just as impressive as ever. There's a subdial that times down to a 100th of a second, a subdial that times down to a 10th of a second, a subdial that times down to the second, and then of course the subdial that times the minute on top of all that, and that last one also keeps track of the hours and minutes as they elapse throughout the day as well. It's a little intimidating at a glance. There are four knobs and buttons kind of sticking off every which way of the case. In practice, it's quite simple. The button down here at the bottom left switches between the timing mode and the time of day mode. And then once you're in the timing mode, that's when the action really gets a little spicy here. You can start and stop with the button at the top right and then split and reset with the button at the top left. And then there is a more traditional crown here at the bottom right as well. And there's pretty unique features in all of these elements that we'll go through. Now keep in mind this is just a first look. A full-fledged review is coming on this watch, which will include comparisons to this original Portura in titanium. You can see there are four different variants of this watch. The SFJ001, 003, 005, 007. Seiko loves their primes. The two regular production models are here at the end this kind of traditional panda and the black on black dial right here these are 895 dollars one in my hand is a limited edition which is kind of celebrating an anniversary of their first hundredth of a second chronograph and this one is 925 dollars and finally there is a fourth limited edition which celebrates the world athletic championships that take place in budapest Hungary. This is all black on black on black, including a black case and bracelet, as well as a textured dial, which is quite sharp. I quite like this version in my hand. It's got kind of a gray dial with some orange accents that work really well here. So let's talk about the watch a little bit. When you put it into timing mode and then hit the start button, it kicks to life pretty frenetically. Of course, the subdial at the far right kicks in in a pace that is, quite frankly, hard to track. Uh, you really got to have a fast reaction time to use this thing properly. So this thing is timing down to a 1 100th of a second. And then over here, we've got your 1 1 10th of a second, and then your regular seconds uh, totalizer over here. Now, the minute hand in the largest subdial at the bottom of the dial here, which is normally used for keeping track of the time of the day, shifts to the 12 o'clock position and will track each minute that passes. The hour hand stays tucked underneath it. So this will, at the end of the day, time up to 60 minutes and no longer. Now you notice these start at a pretty frantic pace like this, and just right there they stop it dead in their tracks, the 1 100th of a second and 1 10th of a second timer, uh, but the seconds totalizer keeps going. This is a move to conserve battery life, presumably. So you get 60 seconds of the full on action, and then it switches down into where it's just tracking the seconds. And of course the functionality of each of these subdials is labeled around the edge of the dial, so you're not going to forget or lose track of what you're looking at here. Now what you would practically end up using that 1 100th of a second timer for really comes down to your reaction time and your creativity, perhaps how long it takes an avocado to go from perfectly ripe to absolutely ruined. That might use up a couple of hundredths of a second there. Now let's talk about how these things wear on the wrist. Of course the original was a rather unusual shape, this goes into a more traditional kind of round shape with a three link bracelet between a set of lugs. It measures 42 millimeters in diameter, 58 millimeters from lug to lug, and just under 13 millimeters in total thickness. Despite those numbers, it actually wears quite well on the wrist. The only thing that might get in your way is those four pushers and crowns kind of sticking off the side. But overall, I think this is a relatively wearable watch and quite the experience on the wrist as well. You maybe think of this falling into fourth watch territory or something like a a plow prof. We don't really judge it by its like day-to-day -day capabilities, but it's just a fun watch to have on your wrist, and it's certainly not unwearable by any stretch. Now, when looking at this next to the older Portura, I can't help but wish they would have followed the somewhat funky design of the case. 
an integrated bracelet a little bit more closely because this was such a unique design from Seiko's history. And pulling those sub dials out into their own realms is something you really just don't see today. Placing them all under a single crystal here still works, but it's missing a bit of the funkiness that we really enjoyed in the Sportura here, especially considering this might not be a perfect daily wearer candidate. If you're going to lean into it, I think they really should have leaned into it. And I would have loved to have seen a more modern take on the original Sportura design. And this has been a first look at the Seiko Prospects Speed Timer Solar Chronograph. Again, we'll have a full review of this watch coming soon to Warren Wow. We'd love to know what you think of this watch. Be sure to leave your comment down below. Let us know if you have any questions or curiosities about this watch. We'll do our best to address it in the review. Furthermore, let us know what you would time down to a 1 one hundredth of a second down in the comments below and we will pin our favorite one. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. And if you enjoy this content, please be sure to leave a like and share. It really helps us out a lot. And until next time, take care.